copied the wrong example. So it should be the first one. The first one is player base. And the reason why we don't use uh, the this one for our information is because we may not have the zero ID. So um, it, it's just useful, useless information that you read, you know, you probably don't care about. But anyways, that one is, the first one is always our, for Counter-Strike, that is, is our um, uh, player base and the second one is our entity list that contains our information and all the other enemies as well which is brilliant um, so we've got that we've got our entity list which is something that simply can help you make your aimbot which we'll use also for our aimbot tutorial so what we're going to do now is going to find out our crosshair entity so what is currently in front of our crosshair, crosshair? as I explained in the beginning of the tutorial um, for, for valve valve source games um, things change. So as you can see here, by shooting this thing, I can see that the barrel is a, uh, a live entity because it has physics and has all this shit. So I can see that it's a, an actual entity. What we're going to do now is we have our friend here running around. So we're going to write bot stop one. Make sure you turned SV cheats on earlier. And bot stop one. Just make sure you read that. Make sure you have that information. Um, bot stop one allows us to. Um, to stop all the bots as the name obviously states that um, so what we're going to find out now is uh, a crosshair entity ID so what currently is in front of our crosshair so that we can boom boom shoot them as that happens so as you can see here things change when you hover over an enemy and the game knows that and we are going to find out that as well so the reason the, the way we're going to find this this can be tricky sometimes but hopefully we'll get we'll get it right um, so click new scan and we're going to do a new scan and we want to scan at the floor. I say the floor because you don't accidentally look at an entity and uh, screw up your search. So look at the floor um, and search for... <laughs> Let's scan for zero because you're not aiming at anything. So zero. Scan that a couple of times just to get rid of any crap. And now we want to look at the enemy. I right click just to get back on my browser. You don't have to do that. Look at the enemy and look for, I would say... Um, the number is usually the ID of the enemy, so I would say uh, look for a between value just just to be on the safe side. We can probably guess the number is probably two. It's most likely is two, but we want to look look between uh, one and five. So next scan, this is going to bring our results beautifully down. So keep do a couple of scans again and again just to 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 get rid of any uh, dynamic results, and that. Is going down quite a lot. So now we go down again, aim, look for zero again, so change to exact value, zero, boom, 83 results, zero a couple more times, just get rid of that crap, aim at the enemy again, look for again a value between, and those results are there again, so next scan, uh, we're getting rid of those results. Um, it cannot be zero because zero is not valid, so is there a not equal to? I don't know. And change value compared to first scan. Um, yeah, look for unchanged value actually. That will get rid of a couple of things. So we have zeros, we have ones there. We are gonna look for zero again. Um, exact value zero. Boom. Get rid of everything that we can here. We have zero now. We're looking at the thingy, and we know that the value is going to be greater than zero than when we, when we aim at enemy. So let's get rid of all those. Uh, greater than uh, zero. Boom. Get rid of. Oh shit. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, sorry, I thought I screwed up. So bigger than zero. We know the value is bigger than zero. So we've got a couple of results here. We're down 24 results. Um, that one seems to change. This cheeky bastard of a result here. So that one seems to change. We know that it's not that result. That would be silly. So um, remove selected address from the list. We don't care for that one. Um, and it could be any of these. Um, highly unlikely there will be five or four because. Um, um, well, why would that be? Because we've only got two players in game. So I think. If I had to guess, I'd say it's just number two him. So aim to the side, aim to him. So now, something to look at, right? This is something we did in the last tutorial, and it was quite a brilliant thing to do. So we know that if we go here on the pointer scan, uh, yeah, we got this address here, and 28, uh, was this our address? Yeah, B4. So the first one that we added here, this is our base result, base address. So would it be fair to say that we're looking for an address close to that. I think that would be a fair thing to say. Uh, so we aim at that. Uh, sorry, just checking out my notes quickly. I think we may have got the wrong result, but I'm just thinking about this for a second. So 283D. Um, 
So if I aim qu quickly, aim at him, two, and that turns to 18, I think I may have screwed it up. We're looking for number two, zero, two. That's fair enough. So we have three one C zero, which isn't a bad result. Um, at the same time, I feel as though I screwed this up because this doesn't match my notes. Immigrant again. Keep going. Yep. Um, sorry, just going to do a quick scan for two here because it's a safe assumption that it equals that. And so zero. Aim two. Zero, two. I mean, this is giving us the result, the result that we want. But what I'm looking for is to make sure that we're not getting um, a, a, a dynamic value that is going to change next time we do it. And I want something that's related to our player base. So I think it may be this one. So I'm going to have a look at this here. Uh, and it, it's not very far away from our base. That's the thing. It's not incredibly far away. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our calculator. Hopefully this will match out my notes offsets. Um, and the reason why we check two is a safe assumption. If we have ten players in, in game, if you're creating your own local server, you're going to be number one. And obviously any bots join will be number two. Now, in a game, you can obviously compare it by doing quite a few other things. Uh, but this, this method is generally pretty good. And once you've got it, you don't once you do it with bots, it will work online, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so um, if we go and grab that number here, copy that, paste that into your uh, make sure you have view program assign uh, pro program calculator and put hex here and then we do minus that minus our player base make sure you get the fb04 one or whatever one is your first one uh, and just get that oh, fuck's sake I'm gonna have to do this the two eight um, three d fb04 hopefully that's correct and that is pretty fucking wrong hopefully I think I may have put a wrong number in there three one I can see they're very far apart and the number is quite not quite correct so I screwed something up along the lines <coughs> doing kind of, kind of players that's not it I'm at ground keep going until we have less than 10 yeah so my guess is I, I clicked wrong in one of the scans so let's do a quick scan again let's try and find this I really hate making mistakes in tutorials but shit happens anyways so um, what we're going to do is going to do the, can, the scan straight for two and hopefully we'll find out where we went wrong and hopefully my notes match. So new scan for zero. New scan, blah blah blah, get rid of all that stuff. Look at our player and look for two. Boom. Look for the number two, look down again, should be zero. Zero again, look at him up again three results okay and those aren't any better than what we've got here are they um, five four three two so I have that address um, aim at ground again keep going so with less than 10 results double click address do address 2e yeah this is not great so we have this here that points to 31C. Hang on a second. 31C0. I think I think my my calculation was wrong and I think the results right. So we have point scan result. I may have notes from a, a different version of CSS that's why they screwed up. So we have 53B4 and this points to this address. Um let's put zero here and the reason why we're doing this is to get our player base so uh, let's change that to hex uh, 28 cb f04 um, so this points to 31 so as you can see this result is very close to this one that we have here what is this one uh, yeah this is our, our uh, result there for our crosshair ID um, so that one's that one so let's do this result Okay, this result minus. So I think all the all that was wrong. We had the right address, but all that was wrong was the calculation. So hopefully I didn't screw this up too badly. So let's go on to the calculator again, um, and do hex mode, and do that number there, that minus this number here, because that's our player base, isn't it? Uh, da -da -da, FB04. Yeah, that's our player base. So we're gonna go three one C zero. Uh, 
this one here is what we're using 3051F8 three, beautiful fuck yes that was the correct one so all that I was doing wrong was uh, well I was trying to be clever and I wasn't following my notes as I should but basically this is the address that it points at and that's what you're comparing to this is how we're gonna get our all our offsets and it's I wouldn't say it's a lazy way but it's a very clever way of doing it without um, it's an easy way, not so much clever, but it's a, ver a very easy way of doing it without going through all the all the debug offsets and, and that hard work. So we found out that our offset is 14D4. And because that address is so close, I think it's pretty safe to say that one will not change. But we'll find out when we restart the game. So we go into this and we go crosshair ID offset. Just go off and then boom. Try offset, just keep people happy. And that's it. It's 14D4. Obviously, it's zero times because it's hex. Oops. Uh, zero times because it's hex. Um, and that's our um, crosshair offset, which is great. And then what we're going to do now is get our number of players. Now, when we're scanning in game, we can't assume that there will be 10 players. We can't assume there will be 20 players because there could be 500 for all we know. And what we need to find out, uh, and not only is this good for in terms of performance it's very very good in terms of performance because that's how I found out on how to improve it because I was doing 32 players every time because that's the max and I was scanning through 32 players every time whereas if you get the variable that holds the number of players that we have in game it will make our life so much easier because if you only have five players in game you'll get that much faster performance uh, when you just scan through five instead of 32 uh, and trust me that is very visible um, so what we're gonna find out now is how many players are in the game so what we're gonna do here Many games have different ways of doing it. So, obvious thing is here, we have two players in this game. So, as you can see here, it says two out of two players alive. And uh, we're going to go new scan, two. Okay, scan for two a couple more times. Guess what? We're going to create a new game, create server. Game, uh, choose um, choose so that bots go random. Okay, we may change, we most likely will change this back earlier. Number of players, eight, we don't care really. Uh, and we shall have nine so eight bots including us will be nine so I'm gonna do SV cheats one quickly and do bot stop one so that they don't do anything fancy so what do we have we have um, eight bots plus us makes us nine players so we're gonna go scan again don't don't do a new scan scan for nine okay so we're down to 29 results that's great stuff let's do a new game and let's change the number of players number of bots to six so there should be seven of us now okay let's do a fraps check Okay, so auto sign, I don't care. So there should be, did I say seven? Four and three, yeah, that's seven of us now. Again, I'm gonna stop these guys before anything happens. Um, and so we're looking for seven now. The number seven is what we're looking for. Oh, guess what, we have quite a few results. Um, now, um, all these could be correct. We, we don't know, it doesn't matter a great deal. Most likely won't be the top one though. So let's do one final one with three players, which should give us a total of four. So three bots plus us. And auto select, we don't care. Again, as you can see, SVG is one. Um, as you can see, there some results were changing quite a bit. Uh, they were playing around a bit, which I don't know if they were correct or not. But so we're looking here. I'm just going to look at my notes. Uh, could be any of these. It it generally might not matter. I mean, you could store them all down and you can use them uh, later on. What I'm going to do is I want to keep this last one here because. Um, not for any specific reason, like I said, they could all be right. The definitely one that won't be right will be the top one because it says 23 now. But uh, I'm going to use the last one here for this tutorial. So it's a, a static address, which is what we need. Shit, don't click that twice. It's a static address, that w which is what we need. As you can see here, when you get into it, it says Engine DLL. So it's a different module that we're going to hook into. But that's fine because, again, that header file that we have does a lot of that work for us. So we say num of players again feel free to try with all those variables which is uh, you know it should be fine um, on most of them or at least three or four of them it's just they, they won't be related to us because it's just the game's way of knowing oh how many players are there in this game right now okay so that's that and we have number of players oh that's our offset that's not an offset sorry it's our address just go add e all right. So that's great stuff. So we have a number of players, so we can loop through, and we can say loop up to eight players or so, whatever we get from there, which will make our life so much easier, and it will definitely give us a nice performance for our aimbot, or trigger bot in this case. 
Now, forcing the game to shoot. Now, this is something that we did for the bunny hop as well, but we forced the game to jump. Now, um, let me think. Uh, we force the game to jump. Now, in any other game, you could use the C++ called send input function. Uh, I, I don't know if that's the exact name of it, but if you Google it, it would come up with the, probably a couple of examples. Um, and you can use that, but it doesn't really matter a great deal. So what we're going to do now is let's go back to a server by ourselves so we can do our own work again and we don't have to worry about the bots because we've got the information that we need mostly. So go to CPU player options, make sure you set bots join team counter terrorists. Again, that gives us unlimited gameplay. Uh, without the 10 minutes restriction and just start the game uh, again choose counter terrorist forces and here we are so that's it he, he can run around I don't care actually let's stop him because we may need him to test the, the aimbot later on um, hopefully he's recording or I'm gonna kill myself so we have all the information that we need um, fucking hell the thing's a bit slow <laughs> 